Welcome everybody, it's Wealth Wednesday. We're starting out with a strong 64 participants. Room for lots more. If you look on that uh, participants list on your application and you see someone that, that you know should be there and their name is missing, give them a, a quick text or a phone call and invite them to be part of that. All right, let's, uh, one more off of, um, Showing their video. Okay, we got that stopped. All right. Today, we get to hear a training from Money Michael Huggins. Uh, this is a guy that is so successful in what he does. He is so enthusiastic. Uh, I don't know anyone in Renatus more enthusiastic than Michael Huggins. He, he just, and he's got every reason to be, right? He has raised his life from changing oil and fixing tires and changing tires and, and working untold hours a week and with so much student loans to pay off and, and a life that just wasn't where he wanted it. He wasn't living where he wanted. He wasn't living how he wanted. He didn't have the time he wanted, but he took control of the tools that Renatus gives us and he has changed his life. And let me tell you, he has changed it for the best. This guy, he, he just travels the world. He travels the nation everywhere he goes. He is making the world better. He is raising up the people that are around him. He is nationally known as one of the best trainers uh, and, and speakers for Renatus. He is the, the highest grossing earner with Renatus Marketing in the whole nation last year. And, uh, you know, it's not an accident. He set out to be. It was on purpose. And uh, this morning, he's with us to show us that we've got a purpose and how to accomplish it. Michael, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. I'm fantastic. Thanks, Ron, for setting this up. Good morning, Renatus Nation, Team Elevate, everybody out there. Welcome. If you're catching the recording, good job sticking to your commitments. And welcome, everybody. It's Wealth Wednesday. Let's go after it with all we can. <clears throat> Quick reminder, we are going to be doing our music video mashup. So while you're sending out your text to your teammates and your new people, I know some of you just signed up some people yesterday, last week, make sure they're getting on this. I'm going to transition real quick over to uh, one of the music video mashups so that we can uh, share it together, and then get in inspired to go make our own. Let's see here. So we got the 2016, 2017. Did we watch the 2018? Let's, let's watch this one. This one looks great. One day, little delay, a working day. But he's not on Life's too tough He can't catch a break Get it, get it, get it done Gotta get it Get it, get it, get it done Gotta get it, get it, get it done Gotta get my game up I will play this game I am not so late They will hear my names I'm not worth it I will never break Take these fears out of this, leave them in my way. Game on. Game on. Mm -hmm. If I can leave my two cents to Billy, I might say, Stop playing this and find your own way. Gotta get it, get it, get it done. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it, get it done. Gotta get it. Gotta get my game on Yo, you gotta climb no matter the 
the slope. So it goes out of luck, grab your paddle and roll. Roll and join those of greats who all rose in the face of opposing tanks. Look at those with no restraint who got roses thrown because they chose their fates. Don't be the same pond who's always finding somebody to put the blame on. Yeah, you can drop bombs via James Bond. Really, all you gotta do is get your game on. <laughs> What a badass music video. What do you want to be a part of? You guys want to get in on that too? We got the next one coming up. It's going to be freaking awesome, guys. So submit, submit your videos. Submit. You guys remember how to do that? Should I go through it one more time real quick? Show you guys how to do that. I think I'll show you. Let's do this. Let me pull my browser right back up. Share. Uh, there we go. Okay. When you're in your business center, what you're going to do is come to the communication tab. Then you're going to go down from communication tab to corporate emails. You're going to click on corporate emails. And then inside corporate emails, it's really easy. All you're going to do is scroll down till you see November 22nd. You're going to see an email named Renatus Rocks, National Music Conference video. Uh, so you can click on here. And in fact, I think they just resent this. Let me check. So it's right there for you. Oh, there it is. It's uh, the, the second and third email also that's up there in your business center. So you just click on here. And it's going to open up. It's going to have the lyrics inside. So here are the lyrics. Woohoo! This will be fun. And then to get the song itself, you click on this link right here. Click on this direct link to download here. And then you upload it to Dropbox right here. Remember to shoot your videos with as much resolution as possible. So if you got like a iPhone 7 Plus or more, then your cameras are definitely 1080. I'm not sure on the Androids, but make sure it's good quality. Uh, and then make sure it's landscape. Please, please, please sing along and play the music in the background and submit as many clips as you'd like. There's no limit to how many clips you want to submit. And get pumped about it. It's going to be fun. And you can add this to your resume. You're now a part of a music video. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you can find that. Inspire your teams, get them going. They all need to know about it. When you get your teams on board with something fun like this, they actually look forward to it. Because some people are like, you know, Super Saturday again? You know, we would do way less Super Saturdays if you just did what we said at Super Saturday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, moving right along, reminder, um, feel free to turn your camera off when you pop into the, the video here. I'm just going to take a second and do this. All right. We're well, glad you're all here. Remember, no I may left behind, so send your people a reminder. Let's get them going. Okay. Teamwork makes a dream work, guys. Speaking of dream work. Is the money still coming in? The money's still coming in. I just crossed 2,100,000, guys. If it's working for me, it can work for any of you. Look at this. Holy guacamole. So I hope you guys see some hope. <laughs> I hope you see some hope with this. <laughs> what I mean by that is, if Michael could do it, you could do it. 
right? For all the silliness and the quirks and the maybe unprofessionalism, but maybe, you know, overachiever, maybe this, maybe that. For all the flaws that I have, it's still working for me. I have, I'm pretty sure I have more flaws than you. If you guys want to compare, I could probably beat you at flaws. One of them is always trying to compete. <laughs> so with all my flaws, the business is still working. Okay. So what this goes to show you is that if you just do the right work, it's not about does Renatus work? Does the system work? Is do you work? Are you doing the money making activities that are going to put your family in a financial position that you deserve? Yeah, buddy, it's working. So if it'll work for me, tell your guests, tell your customers, because it'll work for them too. And great news, it'll work for you. Okay, a few more people, we'll be at 100. So keep pushing. I'm going to pull up a PowerPoint now, and we're going to carry on with our five-part series. We are wrapping it up. This is part five of our Growth and Leadership Train Series. So let's transition here, pull this up, get your teams organized. Let's get it going. These are the last three laws in the 50. Teen Invaluable Laws of Growth. It's going to be good. <coughs> okay, PowerPoint. Oh, actually, I might not have time to finish all of this today. Just kidding. This is not part five. This is part four. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. It's all good. Okay, here we go. Share. Booyah. All right, so now we are talking about the law of the rubber band. <clears throat> We're continuing down our 15 invaluable laws of growth. So the law of the rubber band basically states that growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. Tension. That means tension is required. You got to know. You have to know tension is required. So that when you're feeling tense, you don't try to avoid it. You don't take it as a signal for stopping something. You understand, oh, here's that tension they were talking about, and I'm in it. So that also says that if you create tension, if you, you can activate the law of the rubber band, you can, you can be the person who creates tension for growth, tension for growth, not for anything else, tension for growth. So another way to think about it is here's where you are, here's where you could be, and with the proper tension, we can close that gap. Okay, so now let's quickly talk about stretching. It is time to stretch, and using a lot of the rubber band, stretching happens. So it's been put this way. God's gift to us is our potential, and our gift to God is developing it. If you're in the same place for very long, it is time to stretch. Okay, stretching is, feels so good. Think about it when you get up in the morning and you stretch your body after you stretch for 5, 10, 20, 30 minutes. I don't know what you're doing. Some of you need more stretching. Doesn't it feel good? Yeah, it feels good. But while you're laying in bed, right, you're under your warm blankets, maybe it's a little cold, right, outside, and you're trying to compare that to feeling good in bed, you go, ah, stretching doesn't feel good. Sleeping in bed feels good. I don't want to stretch. But you all know, you've all had an experience where after you stretched, you felt great. So we just need to keep reminding ourselves, stretching feels good. I like stretching. In fact, if I don't stretch, I could get hurt. You guys realize that, that uh, stretching is a part of longevity. And it's easy to be average, so nobody cares. Here's a few other things to point out about stretching is that few people will, and so you will stand out. By stretching, you'll be recognized and noticed because few, so few people do. The status quo ultimately leads to destruction. It's just this static, dead type of lifestyle that the average person engages in. So stay away from status quo and then recognizing that stretching always starts from within, just like everything else. <clears throat> so in your journey of growth, we've been talking about growth, 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 all this growth. 
Here's something to remember. Don't compare, but understand that you are exactly where you should be given all that you've done to get here. All that you've done. You're right where you need to be. <clears throat> all right, now here's some benefits to stretching. Stretching requires change, and so it's never too late for this kind of change, for this kind of stretching. It's never too late to be what you might have been. Right? Don't, don't use this defeatist language. Oh, I could have been this, I could have been that. Um, but if you stretch, you can turn that coulda into a will. Stretching also sets you apart. Good enough is the motive of the defeated. Ooh. Yeah, catch yourself, all right? Are you using that kind of language? You're saying good enough all the time? Let's not do that. Unless you're joking around and you say good enough for government work. <laughs> oh, just kidding, government people. Just a joke, calm down. Okay, here's some other benefits. Stretching can become a lifestyle. You could be perpetually stretching. You could be that kind of person that that's just what you do. It's a lifestyle of stretching. You will fall in love with life. There, there'll be so many experiences in life that you'll be benefited with because of your stretching. But then guess what? All those other people are only going to watch you live because they won't stretch and you will. So there are tons of benefits to stretching. Here's a quote. If you won't be better tomorrow than today, what do you need today for? Basically, what he's saying is growth. We're, we got to focus on growth. We got to live in the tension. We got to be grateful for the tension. We got to keep moving forward. Growth is a part of life. Oh, that's good. Good drink this morning. Good morning, Dennis. <clears throat> Okay, this is something that worked for me. I didn't realize exactly what I was doing, but when people sit back and ask me the right questions and I go back and think, I'm like, oh, this is what was happening. People say, you know, what, what's your biggest fear, right? Because they're trying to conquer their fear. A lot of people fear of failure, fear of success, fear, fear, fear. I realized when going back into my brain, I guess it's the only place I go back in, <laughs> going back, I realized I made mediocrity, I made average, I made normal, I made typical my greatest fear. I made conformity my greatest fear. I made, I made usual my greatest fear. I wanted to stay away from all that stuff. So it became easy. It's not usual, it's not normal to get up and talk to yourself in the mirror for a minute. It's not normal to make a vision board and stare at it with 100% belief you're gonna get it. These things aren't normal. I was afraid of normal, right? Normal is dying in a nursing home. Normal is being a burden on your family as you get older. Normal is complaining your entire life. So I made normal mediocrity the thing to be afraid of. So it forced me into success. How cool is that? So try that on as you're moving forward with your business and your career. Okay, so stretching gives you a shot at significance and stretching must be intentional till the end. There's no accidental stretching. <coughs> okay, now, the next law for today is the law of trade-offs. You have to give up to go up. Did you know that? You gotta give up to go up? You gotta create space for this new lifestyle of yours, this new Endeavor, maybe you want some new material things, maybe you want some new life experience things. Well, you got to free up physical space and you got to free up space on your calendar. You got to give up to go up. So what are you going to give up? See, one of the hardest things about stealing is taking your foot off of first base, right? So many people are like, oh, I made it to first base. I don't know if I, but if I take my foot off, then am I losing it? Don't live like that. You'll never win the game. So, Thinking about trade-offs, let's look at it this way. What will it take for you to reach your potential? What are you willing to give up? What will you have to give up? One of the biggest reasons why people will never reach their potential is they are not willing to give up something. Not being willing to give up something is the key reason why most people will never reach their potential. They just won't. 
They're so committed to something they found when they were five or 10 or 15 and are holding on to it, right? I'm this way. I'm that way. These are my likes. These are my dislikes. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not good at. You hold on to that stuff then you might as well stay 15, right? It's trade-offs. What are you good at? What do you want to give up? So here's some few things I gave up. Uh, did you guys know I gave up smoking? I used to smoke cigarettes. I gave that up for my health. I used to think I was cool. Man, it was so cool. <laughs> so silly, so dumb. You got to give it up. What else did I give up? I gave up TV. I gave up video games. Oh, I gave up complaining. I gave up blaming. I gave up justifying. Uh, I gave up uh, wondering when people are going to change. I gave up being dumbfounded by people's ignorance. I gave up a lot of things like that. Gave it up. Um, I gave up meat. That shit's not good for you. I gave up a lot of things. Now, what's even more important is my willingness to give up more. The stuff I have right now, I'm still willing to give that up. If there's something else to get, it's this give up to go up. It's the trade-off. So so what I, what I traded off for, what my past self for what I have now, I've stayed willing, I'm going to tell you to stay willing to even give that up for the next thing. There's always more. So there's the willingness to give up and there's what do you have to give up, right? If you want to grow a business that involves people, you have to give up your hatred for people, <laughs> right? Uh, you got to give up. If you want to be a marketer and you want to be a team leader, you have to give up uh, being annoyed about reminding people, right? There's some people who just roll their eyes every time they got to give someone a reminder and then there's, but here's my attitude. I know I needed reminders. So I gave up being annoyed by reminders. What do you have to give up? Okay, there's just certain things you got to give up. It's called the law of the trade-off. Let's keep going. But here's, look at the bottom of this. Not being willing to give up something is the key reason why most people will never reach their potential. Willingness doesn't mean you have to. Some things you do have to, but the willingness better be there. There you go. So here it says he's given up getting upset at other drivers. Right? It's, it's easy. It's easy to get upset and get flustered. And then you're not thinking about what you could be doing with that time in the car, your university on wheels. It's easy to get upset at people. But he gave that up so that he could have a better time in the car, focus, uh, get smarter, the whole thing. What are you willing to give up? <laughs> That's right, Avi. You got to give it up, man. If you want money, people have money. That's it. So you got to, you got to give up some of the old ways of looking at things. Okay. Now this give up to go up, let's call it a trade-off. So here's a few truths about trade-offs. Trade-offs are available our entire lives. Trade-offs are opportunities for growth and trade-offs force us to make difficult personal change. This is what we're looking at. What do you want to change? There's always a trade-off. That's the good news. It's not like you just create a void in your life. It's a trade. It's a trade. Yeah, Brian already knows. We got to enrich others to get rich. That's the trade-off. You're enriching other people with your knowledge, with your time, with your energy, with your good attitude, with your systems, with your structure, with your charity, with all of this stuff. You give that up. You give it up to get a team member, to get money, to get business, to get a reputation, to get referrals. But it's all this giving. So in an employee brain, there's no giving. You don't, there's never a talk about giving anything or trading anything right? With an employee brain is just taking. You show up, you take the hours, you take the money, you take, take, take. So, so that kind of attitude in the business world doesn't work. No one wants to work with you. You're just a taker. So what can you give? What can you give up to go up? Some good questions. Okay. Here's a few more. <clears throat> Excuse me. With the truth that trade-offs are available our entire lives, unsuccessful people make bad trade-offs. So dumb. I don't even want to get into it, but so dumb. 
Average people just make a few trade-offs. They're just hesitant. They just want to keep what they have. They don't really want to grow. They don't like the idea of the rubber band and the tension. So they make very few trade-offs. But successful people are constantly making trade-offs and they're making good trade-offs. Now trade-offs, like we talked about, are opportunities for growth. So asking yourself, will I go through this change or will I grow through this change? So we talk a lot about life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. So are you gonna go through this change or are you gonna grow through this change? And then what are the pluses and minuses of this change? Right, there are trade-offs and you gotta measure it. Okay, Tyrone gave up TV for people who aren't dedicated to their success. Gave it up. TV, electronic income reducer. Get rid of it. Visions and ideals. Visions and ideals. What's up, Gerardo? <laughs> All right. Okay, moving on, carrying on with our trade-offs. Here's a few more things. <clears throat> Here's a nice quote to constantly ponder on. We may not always get what we want, but we will always get what we choose. See, too often people just talk about their wants. Ugh, nobody cares. What are you choosing? What's your choice? And what are, what are, what's your decision? Not what do you want. Yeah, I want... Right, imagine that. I walk into the room and I'm like, all right, guys, we're going to get lunch. What do you want? <coughs> and all you talk about is your want, but you don't ever talk about your choice. Are you going to get lunch? No, you're not getting lunch. You have to choose. Okay? So it's the same thing in life. You got to choose. Okay, a few more truths about trade offs. We talked about it forcing us to make. Difficult personal changes. When you want something you have never had, you must do something you've never done. <clears throat> so you got to catch yourself. Don't use this phrase. Oh, well, I've never done that before. Duh. We know you haven't. It doesn't matter. Too many people use that statement as a reason for inaction. Oh, I've never done it before. I should probably go home and think about it. Well, I've never done that before. I should probably research it. Oh, I've never done that before. And they just, they never do. They talk about things they've never done, and then guess what? They don't do it. So that talking just keeps manifesting. So since we already know you have to do something you've never done to get what you've never had, it just goes without saying. You just need to know it. Change is personal, possible, and profitable, but refusing to change means certain death to your potential. Right? If you're not changing your breathing status, then we will consider you dead, right? You got to change in and out versus changing. Give up to go up. At the base core, if you're not changing, you're dead. <clears throat> and one more truth about trade-offs, that if you just have this wisdom, it's going to help your life so much. A loss is usually felt before the gain. That's the biggest reason why people won't change. But the good news is that nature hates a vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. So when you give up, you created a vacuum. And there's a, a void that needs to be filled. <laughs> Something fills it. You got to give it up, though. There's, right? You got to clear some space in your closet for more things. You got to clear some space on your calendar. You got to give up to go up. So because a loss is usually felt before the gain, that's what people avoid it. They go, oh, no, I lost movie night. No longer doing movie night on Wednesdays. I'm going to this workshop thing. I lost movie night. You feel it. But if you continue that workshop, what's the gain? You could buy a movie theater. <laughs> right? <laughs> so just be aware of that. If you feel the loss, get over it. It's a pretend loss anyway. It's all in your head. But then there comes the gain. <coughs> If you do need to do a little bit of research, yeah, but at the end of the day, choosing, like you said, you got to make a choice. Okay, most trade-offs can be made at any time. A few trade-offs only come once, and the higher you climb, the tougher the trade-off. Think about the kind of trade-offs that people like Bob Snyder have to make 
at that level, you know, you're, you're, you have a company that's making 50 plus million dollars a year and there are different things you have to give up in order to go up. So the higher you climb, the tougher the trade off, which is why we're so grateful that Mr. Schneider is constantly working on his skills, his personal development, his connections, his network, he's educating himself. So when he does need to make these tough trade offs, it's going to be fine for the entire organization. But that's just a, another truth about trade offs. So <laughs> Amari says, give up the fluff now to gain everything so later you can go back and get the fluff. Yeah, if you really want the fluff, right? Like I meet these people all the time who are still playing video games after they heard my story. So say, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. What are we going to do? We're either going to sell it on Craigslist, or we're going to go to a pawn shop, or we're going to smash it into pieces right now. Pick, right? And we got to make these trade-offs. And then I remind them, because, you know, in the moment they're like, oh, no, my PlayStation. I just remind them, I say, hey, if you work your butt off for a year with us, you could buy the brandest, newest PlayStation with all the fancy everything a year from now when you have a bunch of money and time to play it. That's right, it's a trade-off. <clears throat> so trade-offs will never leave us the same. And some trade-offs were not worth the price. So what trade-offs do you need to make right now? What have you been procrastinating? What have you been holding back? What do you know you need to trade up on? Procrastination is one of the best ways, if, if, if this is your goal, to store energy, right? To store up your energy, uh, to not use it, right? To just kind of just, it just sits there, to jar it. You put it in a jar, you put it on your back shelf, in the cellar, in the basement. That's what procrastination is to your energy. So every time you do something you've been procrastinating on, you're releasing more energy, you're releasing more momentum. So what, are you been, what have you been procrastinating on your trade-offs? Seriously, some of you know it's video games and TV. I swear, if, if you understood what you could get by trading that stuff off, you'd do it in a heartbeat. Just take my word for it. Give that stuff up. Let it be for mediocre, average people. It's not for you. Oh, but it feels so good to just do the thing I was doing, right? my donuts and my Facebook and my going to the bar every weekend and, and watching every, everything. That's your donuts guys. That's donuts for your brain. Apple a day, whether you like it or not, apple a day, Push ups every morning, whether you like it or not, just do it, do it, do it. Right. We could do a whole, I could do a whole one hour training on just this slide. And why you need to eat more apples. <laughs> Okay, one reason why you don't do well in business, because you don't feel well healthy-wise. You don't do well because you don't feel well. Stop eating garbage. Trade it off. Okay, now, again, when we get to the apples, get organic apples. Don't put pesticides in your body. Okay, trade off. If you're already eating apples, make the trade from standard apples to organic apples. Make that trade. In a few weeks, you'll start to feel more energy in your body. If you keep those pesticides out, I promise you, You'll need less sleep, you'll need less food, and you'll feel much more energetic because your body's not going towards fighting the pesticides. It's just exuberant about life. Think about it. Side, insecticides, right? Pesticides, side. We don't need any sides. Okay. So trade-offs worth making, obviously, are donuts and apples, right? Snicker bars and a kombucha. Trade it off. <clears throat> Okay, so trade-offs worth making, financial security for potential tomorrow, immediate gratification for personal growth. Drop your financial security need, right? And we did a cash recovery party uh, last week. We did our follow-up with it last night. We had guests showing up, and one of their questions was, how do you, what's your safety net? How, how do you transition from being a business owner or an employee to being a business owner. Like, what's your, what's your safety net? What's your, what's, and I'm like, no, there's no safety net. My safety net is my work ethic about moving forward. My, my safety net is my, my, 
my vision for my future. There's no looking back. There's no nets. There's no, you got to give up that kind of thinking or else you're still keeping your foot on first base. Okay, giving up immediate gratification for personal growth. So worth it. So worth it. To do one year of boring stuff, to have 70 years of fantastic stuff, let's do it. Right? Immediate gratification. Give it up. Totally worth trading off. Fast life for the good life. That's something to, worth making a trade for. Controlling your calendar or someone else will and do what you do best, drop the rest. Do what you do best and drop the rest. Let someone else handle it. Do what you do best. <clears throat> so these are trade-offs worth making. Okay, so Chuck modified. He has the discipline. So Chuck put in here, I started using my TV and Xbox to watch personal development videos. Okay, you're now using it for something else. That's the whole point. But are you only using it for that, Chuck? Make that transition, right? We start to do one hour a week of personal development and only 10 hours of Xbox. And then we switch two hours and nine and three hours and eight. Pretty soon, you'll be no craving for Xbox. One of these days, you'll be sitting there and you'll be going, what the hell am I doing? Why am I doing this? This is not real this is not worth it holy cow so. all right and wanda does her power hour every day attitude of gratitude do your push-ups stretch your body do the stuff that give up that immediate gratification of sleeping in for your personal growth it's so worth the trade-off a couple more give up security for significance significance is the thing <clears throat> significance is not found in a safe place so what do you want, security or significance? If you want security, uh, actually, I don't think you do, or you wouldn't be here. We're here for significance. Give up addition and get multiplication. So lead leaders, leading leaders multiplies your organization versus leading followers just adds to your organization. So when you're thinking about who you want to recruit this year and what kind of conversation, and culture you want to create, it is this leading leaders, leading leaders. So we can multiply instead of just adding. And I didn't really think about it this way, but this is a great, this is great verbiage. Be a conduit for blessings, not a reservoir for assets. Right? Constantly keep passing off what you get. That's what we do here. Think about that from that, this last one. What does Mr. Schneider do every time a class gets updated or they bring on a new instructor and we get a new class? He's a conduit for blessings, not a reservoir of assets. He's just passing it right along to us. What a great example. Uh, here's one thing you can do to show Mr. Schneider you're very grateful for what he's done for you in your life. Uh, you can sell a combo today. You can call someone, ask for the order, get it entered, make him a customer, move that forward. That's a great way of showing Bob you're grateful and a big thanks. Okay, last one for today is the law of curiosity. Growth is stimulated by asking why. Why? Why should I? Why should I this? Why should I that? Why, why, why? See, all the things that we're asking you to do have a very specific reason. So if you want to know, stay curious. Keep asking why. There's some of you who are like, I don't need to know. I just want the results. But no matter what, asking why is important, especially asking why about ourselves. And many people will never ask why. Why is that? So let's cultivate our curiosity. Okay. <laughs> I went to a meetup on Sunday. You know, we're supposed to meet new people. So they take a break. Hey, meet three people. Tell them something you're good at. And, uh, you know, so I told the lady what I'm good at. And she said, and then she's like, all right, well, what, what brought you here? And I said, I'm curious. I'm curious like a cat. And she said, I love that. Right? So I just stay curious. You've got to be curious all the time. Curiosity comes from a desire to learn. So desire to learn and you will become curious. Always having a beginner's mindset. Always having this student mindset where everything's fresh. Everything's new. 
um, assuming you know will not be helpful. You are a beginner, okay? You are a beginner. Until, you know, economically, until I, you know, you see someone making a couple hundred million dollars, they're still a beginner. You gotta have this beginner's mindset. Why do you think I got number one two years in a row? I'm gonna get it. I know the contest isn't finalized yet. There's still a chance. Anyway, um, I did it year after year because of my beginner mindset. Right now, we could poke Scott. Scott was on the call right now. We could poke and say, Scott, do you always have a beginner's mindset? Right? Poking this bear. This is the key. This is why he dropped from number one to number two. He did not have a beginner's mindset. I'm not saying Scott's a bad guy. I'm just saying this is a learning opportunity for all of us. If you assume you know, you, it will not be helpful. He assumed he was going to win the sales contest. Well, nope. You got to have a beginner's mindset on everything. Okay? So I use that as an example because I'm just constantly thinking about this contest. But in your world, what do you have, a, have to have a beginner's mindset on? Pretty much everything. Real estate, business, re relationships, right? Maybe you're trying to court a spouse. If you keep assuming you know, you're not going to get a date. You're not going to get anywhere. So have a beginner's mindset with each new relationship that you create. Have a beginner's mindset when you crack open a book or start watching a class. Beginner's mindset is a major key to your growth. And then always asking why, right? Like not in an annoying way. And of course, timing it, right? Like if we're in Super Saturday and I say, you know, hey, text exponential to 41411 to get on our short code. And you're like, why? Right? Time your whys. Okay, if you really need to know, you don't need to stand up in front of 100 people. Just follow the instruction and ask me later. But, but asking why it is, helped me in so many ways. Okay, like uh, the other day I was walking Rupert, walking the dog, and I'm, I want to go into a restaurant. And, uh, you know, they just look me up and down. They say I have a dog, and they're like, oh, you have to eat outside. And I looked at them. I said, why? <laughs> and they said, oh, never mind. If you don't want to, come this way. Or you just got to ask why. People just say shit all the time in life. They don't know, so you have to say why. Why do I have to? And you, you'll see. Consider it. Oh, why should he? Okay, I'm telling you why is it's so powerful. Don't get wrapped up in it, but ask it. Be curious. <clears throat> Spending time with other curious people is also going to help, right? Some of you are just so stuck in your ways. Like I imagine, I imagine, you know, an architect of 30 years that just doesn't ask why anymore he just sits and puts up with it all right he needs to spend more time with curious people people who are asking why all the time pushing boundaries just spend more time with curious people you'll learn how to ask better questions you'll be learning something new every day if you stay curious okay be curious about life not just real estate be curious about life and then partake in the fruit of failure that means get curious about mistakes get curious about trying new things and just being in awe that it didn't work the way you thought it would work. And be curious about that. So many reasons to be curious and to stay curious. <clears throat> now in, in our curiosity, in our curiousness, we're not looking for the right answer. That's not, that's not what this is about. We're looking to look. We're looking to grow. We're looking for opportunities, but we're not looking for the right answer. That's not a thing, okay? Um, think about this. We have this whole phrase of, you know, the name broke, don't fix it. Well, that's mediocre thinking. Try this one on. If it ain't broke, can we do it better? If it ain't broke, what may break in the future? If it ain't broke, how long will it serve as the world changes? Okay, this is what we're talking about, growth and being curious about different things that we're capable of. So get over yourself. Get over yourself. I don't care if you're brand new and you're 18 years old. I don't care if you're 50 and you've been laid off. Get over yourself. If you're 75 and you had a fantastic two, three, four careers and now here you are, great. Get over yourself. Stay curious. Learning stimulates learning. Get out of that box. 
Here's what Thomas Edison said. He said, there ain't no rules around here. We're trying to accomplish something. That's what we do over not us, right? We're, that's our main focus is accomplishing something. All right, so curiosity is the key to your growth. Milestones make you smile, but never stop asking. And don't put any limits on your curiosity. If you're dealing with bored people, do you know what the cure is? The cure for boredom is curiosity. Right? You got kids that are bored. No, 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 no. You're not bored. You're just not curious. Let's go cultivate some curiosity. Let's go ask some questions. Let's say why some more. See, this is the 15 invaluable laws of growth for life, not just in Renatus, not just for real estate or for business, but for life. So when we come back, we're going to get on to the law of modeling and then wrap everything up with a bow. So we'll see you guys on this call for Money Monday. Tomorrow's Christian Sadler. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. And as you're going about your day, be thinking, hey, is this a place where I can I say a one-liner for the music video that we're making? Is this, is this an opportunity? So get with your team, get organized, get with whoever it is in your area because it's time to make that music video mashup. It's so much fun. We encourage it. And um, you deserve it. Tell me that I can't prove you wrong. Tell me I can't be all that I want. Been in a lot of places, seen a lot of people And I don't want to struggle, there's one thing that I know I know it is, I know it is Push right through the eyes, make it to the other side of this Give me one chance, both hands pushing the past into the dust I know, I know it is, I know it is Push right through the eyes, I tell you, no amount of talking will get me there. I'm through believing the answer is somewhere else, but here, been a lot of places, seen a lot of people, and out of all my struggles, there's one thing that I know.